Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Unplugged with Jazz O'Brien Group. And today we're going to be talking again about Bill 44. Last week I had the opportunity to do the podcast with Mr. Ravi Kalu, uh, BC Minister, Housing Minister. And today I have the opportunity to do this podcast with Mayor of Township of Langley, Eric Woodward. Thank you, Eric, for coming in yeah. and sparing your time. I completely understand you're a busy person and Thanks for the nice gesture. You're coming all the way to White Rock in our own setup and spending your time to talk about, in general, about Township of Langley's, the policies, how the developments mm -hmm. are coming yeah. up. And the main primary focus, I said it in the beginning also, we would love to hear about your opinion about Bill 44 because I've read some articles. You've been quite vocal about it. Mm, yeah, so well, let's see. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't need any excuse to come to White Rock. So I appreciate the invitation. No, no yeah, thank I'm you. Great to thank have the you. opportunity to come on. So thanks. Yeah. So Eric, let's get into it. Yeah. What's your opinion about Bill 44? And I get the opportunity to speak to Ravi Kamo. Mm. He said some amazing things are coming up. So my now goal is to go to the different municipalities, talk mm. to the mayors and see what they think of. and. So here we are. Well, so, that's great. I appreciate you, uh, your interest in hearing uh, some of the, I think, mixed feedback on Bill 44. I mean, Bill 44 has got, all, got a lot of different regulations and requirements in it. So you'd have to be more specific about about which aspects. Some aspects of it are, are interesting to, to explore. And, yeah. and some of them I don't think are all that applicable to the Township of Langley specifically. So okay. it's been an interesting process uh, to see the, the province uh, starting to to make mandates around community planning. It's been interesting. Right. Yeah. No, interesting when you said that there are some of the things which you don't think is going to be applicable. Can you put some light towards it? What in particular are you thinking is not yeah. going to work? Yeah, so the Township of Langley, we're, we're growing a lot already within yeah. the Willoughby area. We've got a lot of undeveloped urban land in Willoughby yes. and South Langley. And so we're one of the last municipalities in Metro Vancouver to have that. And for us to provide and grow and uh, create housing in a compact, transit-oriented way, we don't really need to be simultaneously uh, being looking at expanding infrastructure in established neighborhoods like Walnut Grove or Murrayville. It's going to be very uh, financially challenging for the township and I think the development industry to be creating new infrastructure yeah. along with cr retrofitting old infrastructure with the resources that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I don't think a lot of that was considered when the legislation was created. So what is your opinion about the blanket, uh, the policy they have it? One rule for all the property is going to be same thing as you mentioned, Walnut Grove, mm -hmm. Morvoli. I know there are big acreages to big houses yeah. in there. So what's your opinion about it? Or is there something cities opposing right now? Or do you even have the choice to oppose it? Or it has to be like it's coming on June 30th? Yeah, I mean, the deadline to implement uh, four units for every single family lot, yeah. uh, less than one acre was... Uh, is, is June 30th, and yeah. uh, right now it's still under review whether we're going to meet that deadline. You know, some of these deadlines were, I think, a bit unrealistic to begin with. Right. I mean, we had a very established work plan to do a lot of community planning upgrades and updates within Willoughby and in South Langley, mm -hmm. and so we, we chose not to put those on the shelf because those are really important, those are needed, those are creating housing that the minister's looking for, and we've chosen to, to get to it as quickly as we can versus drop everything and, and yeah. do that one plan. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that one of the biggest things that, like we spoke with Ravi as well, was the infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. It's great that they're you know going to be bringing more housing for people, hopefully more affordable for you know low and middle class income people as well. But in terms of the infrastructure, what do you think um, in terms of the provincial government, do you think they are uh, giving you the resources that you need at the municipal level to be able to implement Bill 44 the way that they want it to be implemented? Yeah, well, it's not clear, you know, what infrastructure is even required. And so yeah. that uh, significant engineering review has been mm -hmm. authorized by council, and it's going to take some time to right. know what infrastructure upgrades are needed in some of these older areas mm -hmm. that weren't designed for that level of density. These neighborhoods were created in the 1980s course, and the yeah. 1970s. And, and so in, in the case of Alder Grove, even a little bit earlier. So they don't have the don't have the infrastructure to now suddenly create four units on every lot. Mm -hmm. And is it worth it to put that infrastructure in for a relatively small number of homes in an existing single family pattern? Mm -hmm. Or does it make more sense to have greater fiscal efficiency of infrastructure to do that in Willoughby? Yeah. And uh, none of that, that conversation never occurred with the minister or his ministry yeah. prior to the creation of Bill 44. There mm -hmm. wasn't that consideration. There was no feedback asked oh, wow. from yeah. any of us, right? They just implemented Bill 44 yeah. and didn't even ask us uh, what our opinion was. Yeah. Kind of like, this is what we want to do. 
yeah. figure it out. Yeah. And we asked uh, for an, ex an exemption because, like I said, we have yeah. a lot of undeveloped urban land and yeah. which we can create mm -hmm. and, and put, to good, put to good work to create that housing mm -hmm. um, on a pretty on a pace that's much faster than was anticipated. We're starting to slow that down now mm -hmm. because if we need to go and retrofit existing neighborhoods, uh, we don't have the resources to do it all at the same time. So when the Bill 44 is, because it's a, such a broader legislation, there's so many things into it in terms of, staffing at city level mm -hmm. do does this specifically township of langley does the township of langley has enough staffing to handle those many applications once they're going to cut into it if they the rule is looks like it's going to come in if not june 30th maybe a month later or so when the city catch up with this is so how the inter infrastructure of the city inside in terms of staffing will they able to handle this all in terms yeah, of the application I, I going so. to be yeah i think so i mean uh, we have a we have a building department that processes right. building up permit applications. And yeah. if we get building permit applications for four plexes yeah. um, and the infrastructure is there, water and sewer is available to handle that unit mm -hmm. on whatever location it is, uh, though the, the permit will be processed in a timely fashion. We've done a lot of work to reduce building permit timelines. For a single family home now, you can get a permit in, in less than a few weeks. In less than a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. And in terms of a development site, if somebody wants to do a development, without getting rezoned, zoning already permits it. What's mm -hmm. the timeline township? Well, that timeline? would be more complicated because there's a development permit portion mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that, you know, has a lot of requirements in it. So there's a, depends if it's an apartment building or a townhouse site, mm -hmm. the, the development permit may take some time if you're putting in new pipes and new infrastructure. And then the building permit for that is going to be a little more review. So, we, you know, we typically want to see those issued in around three months yeah. or so. So Eric, my personal experience dealing with a lot of uh, developers, I do commercial real estate mm -hmm. too, and always been coming up with the challenge of the processing type of development permits in particular. Mm -hmm. Building permits in terms of single family, great, you are doing it, streamline it. What are the challenges the city having it? How come they cannot come up with the sooner process of development permits? Because it's always been the issue is supply and demand. By the time a raw land gets a, to a development permit and then to the developing building permit, give or take, it takes three to four years. We are having it. So the time is not able to match up with the cost of land the developer mm -hmm. has to hold on to it. So is there a way something city is thinking of seriously to address this issue and can streamline it something three to four months or six months? I mean, that's an aggressive timeline, but, um, you know, if you're seeing that it's at four to five years in some areas, in the Township of Langley, that's not the case. Right. Um, you know, your rezoning application, some OCP amendments that we've done, we can get those to council in less than a year, and then development permits and building permits can flow after that. The interesting thing for me is I've done some deep dives on some of these files. Why are they taking so long? And I would say on almost every situation, I've found that the developer is not making a quality, complete development application. There's things that don't comply with township bylaws. There's gaps in the application. It's not complete. Or mm -hmm. if it is complete, it, it doesn't just doesn't follow the guidelines or the bylaws that are right there in black and white. Mm -hmm. And so the staff are spending a lot of time going back and forth with the developer to right. navigate them to what's required rather than just understand what's required and submit it. So a lot of these okay. delays in the township, when we do see them, yeah. I've learned that they're coming from the quality of the application and the consultants who simply aren't reading township bylaws. So let's say if the application is perfectly fine, because I understand there yeah. will be a bound to be back and forth. It cannot be mm -hmm. one time everything is going to be perfect. They're going to be bound. But just for an argument's sake, if everything is great, application is good as per the bylaws and whatever the city requires. What's the timeline the city right now taking it for the development? Just Yeah, the, so it'll depend a little bit on the complexity of the area. Is the, it a new area that's opening mm -hmm. up? Is there more infrastructure, more work to do? Is it a brand new street? But if it's an infill site in Willoughby and it's, it's a good application and it follows the guidelines, I think you're to council in less than a year. In less than a year. Yeah. Also, good thing when you mentioned about the council and Ravi was also saying that. What's your opinion about eliminating the council power in terms of voting yes or no when there's any development application is coming? Are you Yeah, in I mean, favor I've heard some that? comments, and it, 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 to me it revealed a sort of, I think, a lack of understanding of the development process as it exists in the township. Um, you know, where we're rezoning brand new urban land yeah. to put housing on it, it's a little more complicated than an infill project in the city of Vancouver. So... I think there's a range of uh, different types of development processes. They're not all the same, and not every municipality is going about it the same way. And, and some of those comments may be applicable to Vancouver, but they're not applicable to the township. I, uh, you mentioned about that, that you were not being consulted about it in, on a personal level or on a 
higher level, all the municipalities were mm -hmm. not being consulted. So what's your take on it? Did you try on your end as a municipality to reach out to the provisional government and ask them, okay, we mm. need more time? So what yeah, did we were very say? quick to the to the to the gate on that. So when Bill Forty Four was introduced, uh, Metro Vancouver yeah. had requested an exemption on behalf of uh, City of Surrey and the Township of Langley based upon mm -hmm. this urban potential, yeah. and when that wasn't considered. Um, we, we were, I was out of the gate very quickly saying, you know, this, there's some issues here. This isn't going to work. Nobody, nobody consulted with us about greenfield versus urban infill. You know, a lot of effort's going to go into creating a relatively small number of units. Right. And is this really applicable here? And uh, we were out the gate very quickly, firing off letters, getting in the media, trying to get some attention to that issue. And uh, as you know, we yep. uh, didn't gain any traction and, uh, mm -hmm. and our input, uh, I don't think, was seriously considered. Yeah. So okay. what do you think of your take is uh, like where this is going to go? You think it's not going to go as it's been projected by the government? that is going to solve the problem of the housing? Well, I think it's unknown, right? I mean, there's no way to know yeah. until you try it and, and you see how many yeah. of these units are created and in which municipalities are they going to be created in. Um, you know, on one hand, you know, you'll hear the minister say, and others, other advocates saying, well, what are you worried about? There aren't going to be that many of these. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, well, then why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know, because we, we have the potential to, I think, create a lot of housing of different forms from townhouses to apartments to row homes right. in the township that I don't think is really recognized or understood by the provincial government. To me, they're spending a significant amount of time on this fourplex plan as opposed to, I think, really looking at some more bold ideas on how more housing could create room more quickly. Mm -hmm. And they haven't, I haven't heard a lot about that. We've, yeah. I think it's more of a, to me, I perceive it as more of a soundbite than a, than a concrete policy mm -hmm. that's going to generate much housing yeah. Yeah. Nice. what yeah. initiatives do you think that they should have you know introduced before you know even consulting bill 44 yeah i think they really should be focusing on construction costs okay. and there's some real inputs into construction cost of concrete and other things that are really putting a lot of pressure on projects uh, the debt financing that's one thing the government really could have a deep role in which would be to finance construction at a known set rate as opposed to in the private market where the the, the costs of financing are extremely high so there would have been other things that they could have done if they're concerned about cac programs or dcc programs you know they could have added a, a sub, an infrastructure subsidy per unit uh, if they're if they're concerned about that. I mean, these are things that they're not doing. They're not asking about them. They're not exploring them, as far as I know. Yeah. I've raised these things in many areas. And, you know, we're really focused on, I think, what we're seeing is the mm -hmm. federal and provincial government kind of blaming cities, right? Yeah. yeah. As opposed to really, I think, trying to understand what's going on. There mm -hmm. hasn't been a lot of interest that I've seen yeah. in really trying to understand the issues, just sort of blaming cities, right? Mm -hmm. No, fair enough. Yeah. And um, the other thing I just wanted to ask you was a lot of young people, they're moving over to Langley, mm. especially the yeah. Willoughby area, right? That's yeah, great. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's great. And as a mayor, do you think that, you know, uh, with Bill 44, they're going to be increasing the housing supply, which again would mean the prices they're, they're hoping would come down. Do you think yeah. that this will be actually, uh, in real life, this would be something that would actually lower the prices for housing? I think it's, I mean, it's certainly possible, but there's been no evidence that I've mm -hmm. seen that yeah. increasing housing supply has led to greater affordability. Mm -hmm. uh, building the quantity of new housing that we have been in the region for so long, net mm -hmm. migration being what it is, yeah. so many more people coming, yeah. it hasn't become clear to me that we can build our way to affordability. Mm -hmm. um, what we've noticed in the township is that whenever we reduce cost, you know, streamline, get the approval timelines down, maybe see uh, reductions in fees in some cases. Um, what's happened is developers simply pay more for land. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, not, it's just the, the land speculator is the one that's benefiting from the density, benefiting from any cost cutting that goes on. It's not the, it's not the end user and it's not the municipality. And so I think, we're seeing, again, we're seeing a lot of sound bites from, mm -hmm. from uh, politicians at mm -hmm. senior levels of government right. who don't seem to want to hear that, that, yeah. that, you know, that in fact we could do all of these changes that mm -hmm. they talk about, CACs and DCCs, mm -hmm. and all that will happen is people will just pay more for land. So okay. more for and do you think that, or I don't know if the discussions have already happened with the provincial and the municipal government, in terms of the metrics that they're going to be using to see if their plan has actually worked? Yeah, I haven't seen that. I don't know much about how they're going to measure whether it's successful or not. I'm assuming we won't see that measure until well after the next election and they've gotten another mandate, which seems likely mm -hmm. at this at this date yeah. anyway. Yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's the idea that we're going to demonstrate that we're that they're trying to do something yeah. um, as opposed to to what they could be doing or maybe what would be more substantive in terms mm -hmm. of producing results. Yeah. At least they can point to the fact that they're trying something. 
Yeah. And indeed they are. They are trying yeah. something, right? But so, Bill 46 and 47 mm -hmm. and Bill 44 together um, don't apply to the township of Langley and they're, they're causing a lot of problems for us. Problems yeah. for, but you mentioned also that they have rushed to it. What do you think, why the reason is, is it because of the elections coming in? That's the reason they're rushing to you'd it to, to implement them. it? I'm, you'd have to ask <laughs> them opinion? why they're okay. doing what they're doing. I'm Fair not going to speculate. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I, what's your opinion about I like why they want to I like, I like the premier. They, they seem like good people. And I, yeah. and I get I mean, they're great people. I don't have any issue with them personally. Yeah. Um, I wish there had been more of a, a hmm. conversation with elected officials to say, okay, you know, what are some ideas that we mm -hmm. can execute on together? And I can think of a lot of ways that the, t the province and the federal government could help the township of Langley and yeah. the city of Surrey uh, build infrastructure and, and produce yeah. housing, mm -hmm. but uh, no one's even asked. And okay. I think that's the issue. Yeah. Right? How, yeah. Obviously, at the municipal level, have you guys proposed that? Like, what the what you well, would yeah, want sure. to do? Sure, we've said yeah. like you know we, this, these are not, these ideas maybe sound great in some other areas where and you have single family homes next to SkyTrain stations. Yeah, I mean, maybe that makes sense for the province to start to intervene and sort of say how are you going to deal with this? If mm -hmm. you've, had, you've had plenty of time to deal with that, yeah. Yeah. and you haven't dealt with it, that doesn't again doesn't apply in the township of Langley. We're building more housing under previous councils and previous mayors than we probably should have. So we're slowing that down and mm -hmm. we're building infrastructure to try to catch up to that growth rate. And, uh, you know, if they want the growth rates to be even higher, mm -hmm. uh, they got to come to the table and help us with solutions, you know, rather than just, just blame cities as we so con consistently see, right? What I can feel about it, about Bill 44, once it's get implemented as an outsider from Township of Langley in particular, pond issue because mm. of services. Yeah. yeah. Ponds are the... So how the government is going to address that or did they talk to you or have you spoken to them? Uh, the we made a proposal. Yeah, it's a great question. We made a proposal to uh, Minister Callan actually um, yeah. and others within the cabinet to say that if you were to, you know, front the cost of detention pond. pond infrastructure, yes. you'd get it back over time from development with interest yeah. and you'd open up additional areas. And, and that had some benefit to the taxpayers of the township because we need some of that infrastructure right. that's being held up because development's yeah. not proceeding. Because of the detention pond issue, uh, we made that proposal oh, over a year ago and uh, never, never heard back. So what I'm trying to understand here is basically it's not going to happen anything because who's going to bring that pound detentions in there because it costs millions and millions yeah. of dollars. If they, even does, if yeah. the zoning permits it, okay, you can build six plexes, the cost is not going to make sense. Who's As a small builder, like if I'm a small builder, I'm not going to bring the pound yeah. detention. It has to be a big developers who's going to bring those. So Typically, the, that's been the case. Detention pond, we haven't seen a new one built in the township yes. in a while because the cost, cost of them is, is so, so significant. High. And in some areas, the densities were too low to justify that. Um, you know, they have got the school site issue as well. So the upfront infrastructure cost to opening up new greenfield areas is quite high. And yeah. it typically does require a larger developer to do that. We suggested that some of that could be you know, taken by the government. Yeah, the yeah. government, if the, if the senior levels of government would, would fund that detention pond, they would get their money exactly. back with interest yeah. over time. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we, yeah. never, we never heard back. No. no, but because, yeah, that's a very good point. Unfortunately, you didn't hear back what is. I can relate to it. There's so many developers out there who are holding the land because they're looking at somebody, a big guy coming in and putting a pond detention. And because of that, the zone, the, nothing is happening in those cities. Yeah. So, And with this news yeah. rule also, I don't think it's going to go far anywhere because who's bringing the services and I asked Mr. Carlo too that time and he mentioned that no the services majority of the cities have the services issue being resolved I said okay then that's not that's not my understanding that, yeah. that may be his maybe he's got more information than I do but uh, mayors that I've heard throughout the region there they just simply don't have the infrastructure in place to proceed with bill 44 bill 44 yeah. on yeah. there okay okay um, and I had another question regarding the schooling, transportation, healthcare, right? Yep, Let's yep. say Bill 44 does, you know, increase the supply and having more people move to Langley. Do you have enough schools, hospitals? Yeah. Right? Do you have the essential services that are needed by people? Well, I think it's a great point, right? Because as we are growing in Willoughby, mm -hmm. if we start to see significant uptake of fourplexes in established areas, you know, we're going to have to go in and, and, and deal with that. So... You know, right now, Walnut Grove, we're seeing growth of portables as it is because of overflow from the Willoughby area. If we start to see simultaneously fourplexes coming in on any volume, then mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to start to see, you know, increased pressure on schools there as well. That's not something that we want. Yeah. You know, we want to see, you know, more schools built faster. We want to see investment in regional hospitals like Langley Memorial, and we're not mm -hmm. seeing that. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we see in an elementary school that takes five years to build. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for that. There's no common sense reason for mm -hmm. that. 
Um, there's a political reason for that, yeah. to spread it out over time and, and try mm -hmm. to sprinkle investment everywhere. But meanwhile, we are short schools significantly. We have hundreds of portables mm -hmm. in our community yeah. along with the city of Surrey, a significant yeah. portable problem. Yeah. And we're not seeing the construction of schools, schools to keep up with that growth yeah. while telling us that we're not doing yeah. enough, right? Where, well, the cities are the problem, cities are the problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, well, I, I don't think that I can justify to my residents, yeah. mm -hmm. like yourself, yeah. that we're going to grow even more because the minister said so mm -hmm. while uh, they're not building schools or investing in hospitals to the way that I think everybody understands they need to. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a difficult dilemma for us yeah. because yeah. Uh, we, I don't like being told that I'm to blame, you know, as we hear from, from senior levels of government mm -hmm. while simultaneously trying to explain to my residents why we're doing all of this mm -hmm. if the province isn't going to follow through on their commitments. So also on what your take would be on it, other than the Bill 44 on the Township of Langley proposing a streamlined process for the applications, like I understand staffing is an issue. You mm -hmm. have to hire more staff if you mm -hmm. want to streamline. How about this if the city propose higher fee if somebody wants a quicker application yeah. and versus a normal up fees? I mean, that, that's, that's, that's been tried before. Yeah. And, I th uh, you know, to be blunt, uh, everybody would pay it. Yes. And so it doesn't, you're just back to where you were. And I think that, that it, has, it has failed for that reason. Right. If you have a special line that you yeah. can pay double and you can go to the front of the line, everybody would pay it and go to the front of the line. So yeah. it doesn't really so work, right? I and have I, a counter to that is because yeah. if everybody's willing to pay, then why don't we, the city, mm -hmm. hire more staff, yeah. pay them more? Because there are people who can give the cost to the employees who are getting hired because as the developers, yeah. they are holding million dollar properties which they have to pay the mortgage in six figures, now especially with a high rate interest. Yep, so that's mm -hmm. an option, and the Township of Langley's been doing that. We've been, uh, for the first time in many years, we've been we've been resourcing the building department department and development services. So they've been making requests for more staffing, and we've been funding those and to improve timelines. Yes. The problem is there's quite a few vacancies. So there the people, the expertise to process building permits or an urban planning expertise to process these applications mm -hmm. isn't, isn't there. And so we have a lot of vacancies of positions that we would love to fill so with people this, to pursue You don't have the skillful people. So what's your take about if you give more authority to the civil engineers and the architects to approve those applications because the city has a shortage of the yeah. staffing and yeah. those architects can look into it because end of the day, it's their liability anyway. They're giving those schedules. So they are on the, state, yeah. on the hook. Yeah. So how about if city per give them the power to approve those applications? Have yeah. you ever talked about it? I think it's a good suggestion. I've, I've even floated it uh, when I was on council last term. Um, but I'll come back yes. to the point I made. I've looked at how many applications where these architects and consultants don't even know townships bylaws. So one of the problems with the, and it's not their fault, they're, they're great professionals, mm -hmm. they're highly trained. Yeah. The problem they're having is you've got how many municipalities that they're doing business in and every municipality's bylaws and subdivision rules mm -hmm. and, and guidelines are different and they're only different by a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of work to understand and know the intricacies of every single municipality. That's really hard. Mm -hmm. And so they're not going to get it right in every municipality all the time. And so if yeah. you were to allow them to build whatever they want, hoping that they read the bylaws, um, I'm not sure that's a solution given it's, that It's core not problem. a solution, but it could streamline at least something than better. Nothing. Right now, there's yeah. nothing in terms of, as you mentioned already, there's a vacancies, but you can't find a suitable candidates yeah. for those. And also to help that, you could always put up a selected people and then architects and engineers. These are being done. You, you guys have known them like you trust their experience they have know the by bylaws everything the guidelines it could yeah. be like to begin with three four and the more people can add on to it the list okay yeah. these are the suggestible professionals because end of the day it's about the approval of the l the land is still there i know there's everybody's talk about the shortage of land but there's so much of a land still there with mm -hmm. the applications are in the process yeah. and taking years and years to get that done and the frustration of the developer comes in that okay I'm paying so much money to buy the land and the carrying cost is so much. So how the affordable housing will come into the picture because at the end of the day, I'm into a business to make money. So end user, who's the homeowner going to be the one who's going to be paying it all. So isn't it yeah. more sensible than if we help this way around? Selective professionals can be done in there. You can you can definitely point me to a city that's done that that it's accelerated or improved the process. Oh, I wish I, I was think, in the I power. I don't think you'll find one. <laughs> I, I wish I was in the power and, and I could do that if it was in my hands. Yeah. I'm just giving as a suggestion. Okay, as, so let me let me let me answer that. So, the, you know, again, I think you're going to come back to the issue that um, 
we're not seeing this in the township of Langley. You might yeah. be seeing this in Vancouver where they want to negotiate CACs for three years. They want to grab as much profit from the mm -hmm. development as they can. We're not doing that in the township of Langley. If you have a townhouse site on 208th Street and you know what you're doing and you make your application, you'll get to council in less than a year. You'll get your servicing agreement within six months. We're trying to get that down. You'll get yeah. your building permit. You'll get underway if you know what you're doing. And we yes. have a lot yeah. of people that are making applications for housing mm -hmm. that they're never going to build. Yeah. They're going to get it approved and sell it to somebody else. I'll mm -hmm. give you another example. I talked to a well-known developer in Langley that builds projects. And they will look at an approval, something at third reading for an apartment building. And they will look at it. It's been approved, ready to go. Somebody wants to sell it. The wrong unit configurations. They're not market saleable. The developer doesn't want it. The mm -hmm. municipality just spent a year and a half working on this application that was done by somebody who's not a developer. And mm -hmm. now you have something that can't be built, You're going back to scratch to do it again. This is grinding through the system. We have a lot of people in the system that are making development applications for projects they're not going to build, mm -hmm. and they just sit on the shelf. We have thousands of units that are approved at third reading that aren't being built. And so the, the, you have a lot of people in the system in the township that are consuming a lot of staff time. Now, if mm -hmm. we had some way to only have people that were making applications that were actually going to build product, that's one way we would speed up the system. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it makes sense. We, we have a lot of people yeah. in the it, system it wanting be, to make money, yeah. not yes. necessarily build housing. Yeah, it could be go both ways. You can hire those, you can have those selective developers also. These are the developers we are taking the applications. It has happened not in BC province, but I've yeah. seen it in Ontario. There are people, or in Calgary also, those yeah. big developers are the ones only yeah. who can have the whole land we get legal we get legal advice that um, that's not fair yeah. that yeah. if you have you cannot tell somebody that mm -hmm. well you're not a developer we're not going to process your application we're going to process his instead yes. his or hers instead uh, we have to treat everybody fairly and, yeah. and yeah. the township takes that very seriously everybody gets a fair process everybody gets the responses in a timely fashion mm -hmm. uh, we're not in a position to prioritize one person over another yeah. no but it enough. does generate frustration yeah. for some of us that are in staff as well seeing mm -hmm. all this work to create development applications that aren't being built yeah. yeah just i don't know if if i remember correctly but when we were doing the podcast with uh the minister you were talking about a, a client of yours was that in township of langley yeah, yeah that is that township was, of that was the development permit in yeah. brookswood that yes. you mentioned yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and I could, I could feel your frustration that <laughs> this person was taking so long to get through the system the system yeah, yeah. so can you put some light to it? Why is it? Because this has been actually, right should, from one of the clients of us. Yeah, we should uh, actually talk from the start for the people that don't know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there the is a property yeah. in Brookswood. A client of mine has purchased it. No zoning, rezoning needs to be done. Even the application going to the council after the application all been done, checked with the staff. I'm not talking about going back and forth with the planner. Yeah. Once the planner has approved it, it's going to go to the council. It took six to seven months to go to the council. Even. Yeah. And the frustration was that some days. The planner is off. Automate emails comes in. Yeah. Somebody else will yeah. be replacing. Yeah. That person yeah. saying, I'm away too. Yeah. City manager will take care of it. And if I have to go in full detail, <laughs> I have to go personally to the city, have a meeting in person with city manager mm -hmm. and the planner and the architect who was looking at the file. Yeah. Then only things started moving. And then, yes, it started moving and it went to the council in two weeks or three weeks. What I'm trying to explain here is if you look at from the developer's perspective, it's not going to the council. The mortgage on that is $50,000. There's only once a month the council meeting is going to happen. If we miss the deadline in, for whatever reason mm -hmm. is, yeah. it's so frustrating for a developer because it's not developer's fault. It's from the city end that they miss the deadline because of some minor things being not being addressed before. Yeah. And now it's going next month. So who's paying for that is why the developer has to pay for all this. He's yeah. on the receiving end. Well, the development business is not for the faint of heart, right? Um, it's, a it's a challenging business. It is. Yes. There's a lot of expertise mm -hmm. required. And I think the profit margins reflect that risk. Yes. So uh, in the case of that particular application, mm -hmm. uh, it came to council. It was one of the first apartment buildings in Brookswood. Mm -hmm. And a, a few members of council... So you have seen it, that one? Oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> okay, that. Okay, okay. A few Looked members of council uh, expressed concern that was enough being done for tree preservation. So it was referred back to double-check that. And it came back with some reassurance, and it got approved. So yes. to me, 
you know, that is council doing its job. We've heard a lot of concern from residents of Brookswood on what development's going to look like. I share that concern. Yeah. And so I think it was just uh, checking some, dotting some I's and crossing some T's okay. on one of the first proposals in Brookswood. Um, I understand it was a development permit. Yes. And, uh, you know, we would like to see those things go ahead. I think, uh, you know, this council has done a lot of work uh, to delegate development permits. There's a lot of development permits in Willoughby for very standard residential applications like town townhomes or single family subdivisions that don't come to council anymore okay. because of this issue. Right. So apartment buildings are sort of the, one of the last ones where council still wants okay. to see those. Yeah. So now we're talking about Brookswood. What is happening with the NCP, Naval Community Plan with Brookswood is yeah. taking forever. Well, not you say it's taking forever, <laughs> but uh, not under our leadership. So um, the, the, the Brookswood neighborhood plans have now been adopted by council. Yes. Uh, they've been updated based upon the impacts of Bill 44. We've gone back and made some changes to those plans, and, and they've now been readopted by council. So it's, it's been done, and now it's been re readopted, or it's still in the draft situation? No, those are now readopted. Adopted. Those are bylaws. Those have been approved by council. Oh, that's good yeah. to know, yeah. yeah, because it's been for a long again <laughs> it, yes, has. Um, it has they were done until bill 44 and we had to go do them again so yeah. if you have a concern about that you should bring it up with the minister oh. um, i'm very happy that uh, we've we've uh, consulted with the community yeah. made as many tweaks as we could and, mm -hmm. and i believe in the end uh, we have plans now that accommodate the bill 44 options yeah. uh, better than before yeah. yeah no which is great yeah. and uh, just wanted to let you know also as our job is not to be favoring or opposing anybody mm -hmm. where I'm trying to do it as as a podcast is coming up showing to the viewers just the insights of it what as a mayor of township of Langley you think about it and what the minister thinks about it what other people yeah. who are in those powers position seats they think about it and yeah. how real it is because there's a lot of speculations great. about yeah, these great. things yeah bill 44 other yeah. things also so I would you know an example I think it's great because I think we need to hear more from mayors in the region like I do I talk yes. to them a lot and we're seeing a lot of focus on cities cities are bad cities are why there's no housing um, and it's it's more complicated than that mm -hmm. I'll give you another example uh, maybe next time you talk to the minister ask him why does it take two years for a water act approval for a ditch on the side of the road i've got a townhouse development uh, the town the community does um, on 208 street mm -hmm. yeah. that has been in the system trying to get a water act approval from the province for over four years Maybe ask the minister yes. about that. <laughs> See, That's holding up housing. I don't yeah. hear a lot of talk about that. I could yeah. give you example after example of where the province's processes are actually holding up housing, yeah. whether it's approvals from the Ministry of Transportation yeah. of Infrastructure or a Water Act approval. Yeah. There's a lot of processes at the province that I hear a lot of complaining yeah. about and as we well. Wanted, yeah. And I would I would love to see the province yeah. spend as much time on that yeah. as exactly. they are on cities. No, fair oh, enough. And yeah. I agree with you. This is the whole reason why we wanted yeah. to do this podcast. Yeah. So the, a normal person, a viewer can watch it, watch the inside it and you again I agree that everybody's putting a blame on the cities the municipalities mm -hmm. they're thinking yeah. of it what I could tell is yes I agree to the point where you said that the developers or the smaller developers have got the rezoning done but they're not building it so it's not always a city to blame it there should be some system in place that mm -hmm. where the developers are also being penalized if they're not developing the properties if they're getting the DP and not having the intent yeah, of just get a flipping project it. to prove that uh, and they're nobody not wants doing because it's not the right product, it's not the right size. Yeah. It's They've just the ignorance of the whole project, yeah. how they have built it and yeah. how they're proposed. And then it, that infrastructure, we're not getting that DCC revenue. We're not getting that housing. Yeah. Yeah. We're not getting that road finish. Yeah, we're it's not going in nowhere. Yeah, it's it just sits. sits and, uh, you know, we don't hear a lot about that. We have a lot of people in Willoughby and City of Surrey, I assume as well, that own development land that aren't doing anything with it. They're not developing okay. it. They're not applying for it. They're just sitting on it, waiting for it to Could go up in value. That's their, that's their right to do that. Yes. But what that's doing is that's holding up housing for yeah. people that need it. What I could tell is from the other side of the story could be the reason also the higher interest rates have gone and it has changed the numbers of a mm. lot of the developers, what they were projecting it and then what they are now. With that the carrying correct, cost yeah. and that too, that's it's correct. good to, to some extent. That's why I brought it up. If the government, if the federal level, maybe more so, 
had come in right away and said, okay, if you've got a project that was going to be financed at 2% or 1.5% or 5% and now it's 10%, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. we're going to come in and we're going to deal with that. That would have kept a lot yes. of housing yeah. projects on their underway. We would have kept the construction industry going. There would have been a lot of economic activity around that. The government chose to ignore the issue and instead spend a huge amount of time on Bill 44, 46, and 47, and apparently he didn't have any time for that issue. And that frustrates me because mm -hmm. that yes. was a core problem that Pro was holding problem, up yes. a lot of housing, especially in Vancouver and Burnaby yeah. and other areas where we need it next exactly. to that transit infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we haven't heard one word about that. Yeah, no, that's unfortunate. And exactly what you said, it also pound detention. If you have mm -hmm. proposed that, that should have been highly considered because that was a very good idea. Yeah. The government has the funds. They can actually yeah. do it and charge the developers the latecomer fee or the interest on it and get it. So at least it will get the small builders to build, start building it. There's so many yeah. sites out there which are approved and the, there's no pond and they're waiting it yeah. because it's a holding in there. Yeah, no, a great. Maria, anything else before we finish up? As Manuel is over the, already signing up. Okay, we have 60 minutes. Okay. We <laughs> usually keep a trend of 45 to 60 minutes. That's so we nice. are in there. Yeah. So yeah, good. no, I, we really appreciate yeah. again for okay. coming in all the way. It's a great talking to you and okay. hearing the insights of how Township of Langley thinks about the projects and what about the Bill 44. I hope uh, it goes well with all the sites. It works well because end of the day, we don't want it as a common citizen. It's an one another failed attempt of the government on whosoever side it could be municipalities or the provincial government or the federal government. This housing needs to be addressed because it's the need of the hour right now. Yeah. People are challenging it, so hopefully something works for it. Yeah, well, and the township's doing its part. I mean, we're building more housing than I think we can we can handle, which is why we're pulling back a little bit. We're trying to catch up on road infrastructure, yeah. trying to catch up on, on, on recreation facilities for ice and soccer. Yeah. And so we're doing a lot of work on that infrastructure side yeah. uh, to Great. continue to, to grow as, as people have expected us to, mm -hmm. but we have been growing too fast. Yeah. And I think Bill 44 and Bill 47 put even more pressure on the township that mm -hmm. that really wasn't necessary for us. It wasn't applicable to our mm -hmm. community. And yes. this yeah. one size fits all approach mm -hmm. that's been taken, I think is, uh, is really unfortunate. I know yeah. you're not yeah. going to say it. I can say it. It's because of the elections are coming. <laughs> so we yeah. have to do something. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, yeah. it's just the pressure of that. And yes. I think there there is some there's some rationale for it in in other communities like Vancouver where you have a significant amount of single family inventory, yeah. you know, yeah. all across Vancouver, you know, from the peninsula down to the to, down to the Fraser River. You got to do something about that if the city's not gonna not yeah. gonna do that. But there was no need to do it to the township of Langley. Yeah. yeah. No. Great. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Manuel. Yeah. Take care.